all right so hi everyone in this tutorial we are going to learn how to manage and configure open ssh service in linux so i've got two machines one is the my machine one as you can see and the other machine is my machine two right so we can treat both of them as client and server so um how before starting the practical session we need to know what is open ssh service actually so open ssh or ssh is called secure shell and it is used to run the shell on the remote machine if you have got the user account present on the remote machine right so in simple words you can say that it is used to remote login right so we are going to treat this machine as the client and this machine as a server so how to log in and how to perform other activities and uh, how to log out uh, for that i have made a doc document so let's go through that first so i have written everything for making it easier so open ssh is called secure shell it is used to securely run a shell on remote system if you have user account on the remote system providing ssh services so before you can securely uh, log in to the other machine it is important that the other machine should provide ssh services so by default we studied in the last lecture also that uh, ssh service already is already running it is enabled and it is automatically started when you switch on your system and the service is running till you manually stop it or till you shut down your system right so that service is already running but you need to make sure that it is running right so this is my client machine and this is my remote machine right so in order to log in to this machine to server machine what we need to write we need to write ssh space the name of that machine or you can write the ip address of the server right so ssh space ip address of the server when you press enter it will ask you to provide the password of the remote machine right by default we have not written any user name along with the remote host so we are logging in as the root user on the other machine so you need to provide the password of root user of that machine right right so after you are done with everything you need to log out and to log out we have exit command right or if you don't want to log in as root user but you have any other user account on the remote machine like you you want to if you want to log in as student user then ssh space student at the rate ip address of the server right it will ask you to enter the password of that particular user on that machine right after you provide the password you will be logged in and after that you can log out after doing all the things you can log out by using log out command or exit command right now the other thing is if you don't want to log in actually but if you want to just run a single command on the remote machine right for that ssh then remote user at the rate remote host and after that the command which you want to run on that machine right enter the password of the user and then it will execute the command on the remote machine and it will display you uh, the output on your local machine but it will not log in actually right and at any time we'll perform everything and at any time if you want to just see that how many users how many remote users have logged in in my machine then for that we have w command if you write w press enter it will display you all the users who have logged in as um, um, by using ssh services on all the terminals it will display the output right so let's do it and uh, what is my ip address oh the connection is down so in order to up the connection you need to run this command nmcli con up and then name of the interface and ip space a 
so 192.168.159.132 this is the IP address of my machine which is the client machine but you need to know the IP address of the server in order to log in so nmcli I need to bring up the connection so IP space A it is displaying 192.168.159.211 Right, so this is the IP address of the remote host and what, uh, this is my machine 2 and this is my machine 1. Right, so now what we're going to do, we're going to log in on remote host by using the command ssh and then the IP address. Yes, and you press enter. Connection is refused because... System CTL restart sshd dot service in case it is not running. So now the service is running and it is connection is there. Remote host should provide SSH services in order you want to log in by using ssh command right so now the services are provided and you have written the command and want to continue because this is the first time connection so it is displaying that uh, that authenticity of the host it is not established right so for first time connection it displays this so you want to continue i wrote yes and now it is asking for the password of the root user of the remote machine right so you enter the password and yes we are able to log in so it is displaying the prompt root at the rate my machine too right so you have logged in and anything you do here that is actually being executed on the remote machine to create a chain of directories by using mkdi-p command one two three four right and uh, if you check it on the remote machine ls you can see that this directory is created trying ssh and in case you list the contents of this directory it is displaying you the contents right and in case you run any command like systemctl start and then name of any service then you press enter then that service will start running on the remote machine right in case you write init space zero and you press enter then the remote system will shut down right and the connection will be closed so after you are done then you can exit by using exit command now the connection is closed right in case you want to log in as any other user on the remote machine, then you need to write ssh space name of that user which is existing on the other machine at the rate IP address of the remote machine. Right? And press enter. It will ask you to enter the password of the remote user and then you will be able to do all the tasks which that user can do. If you don't want to log in actually but you want to just execute a particular command on the remote machine then for that you have the command ssh 192.168.159.211 then the command which you want to execute like I just want to know the host name of this IP address so you are entering the password and it has displayed you the output of the command you have you have entered along with this command and it is not logging in actually right and if you just execute w command so currently we have logged in on terminal 3 but no other user have logged in no remote user have logged in Right. So, in case you log in, so now we have logged in. 
to the remote machine and if we execute w command it is displaying that from 192.168.159.132 there is a connection right so I am logging out and let's go to that file again so this is just uh, notes file and it is not existing on in all the machines right so I have manually written all the things here so we have um, executed w command w command and how SSH service it works SSH secures communication by public key encryption so when the client first time connects to the server then server sends a copy of its public key to the client right so every time um, the client tries to connect to the server it will make sure that it gets the same public key from the server by comparing the value of the known host file so if it matches the connection is proceeded if it is not match uh, if it doesn't match then in that case connection is broken thinking that it can be a man in the middle attack so next thing is configuring ssh key based authentication now we have seen that whenever we want to log in we need to write ssh space ip address of the remote machine and it asks for the password then you write the password and it allows you to log in but what if um, the connection is to be created a number of times and you don't want to enter the password every time you make the connection so for that what we use we use the ssh key based authentication so in that case what client will do client will generate a pair of keys right so a pair of keys is generated one is the public key and the other is the private key private key will be kept private and the public key will be sent to the server right public key will be the key gen this is the command which will be used to generate the keys on the client side right it will generate a pair one is idrsa which is the public which is the private key and the other is idrsa.pub so this is the public key and both of these files will be residing in .ssh directory of your home directory in the client at the client side right uh, one more observation is given that idrsa which is the private key that will have permission 600 and this public key it will have permission 644 obviously private key must be kept private so that is why nobody else has the read permission or any other permission on this file right so only the user of the file has six permission which means read and write permission right so group and others they don't have any permission whereas on public key you have read and write permissions and group and others they also have read permission means they can be able to read the file but they cannot be able to write into the file logging in public key must be copied to the destination system it is done by using ssh copy id command right so what you need to write you need to write ssh copy id hyphen i and then root as the read server ka ip address right so enter the password and then file will be copied and next time when you want to log in to the remote machine it will not ask you the password right so we are going to test it so this is my machine one and this is my machine two so first of all I am going to generate a pair of keys by using s command so default default so this is the key which is ha it has generated so your identification has been saved in id rsa this is the private key and this is the public key right now we need to send this public key on the remote machine right you can see that when you execute let's move into our home directory first when you execute ls command you cannot see ssh directory because it is hidden so ls hyphen a it is displaying you dot ssh directory see 
now when you move into this directory cd.ssh and you press ls it is displaying you idrsa idrsa public right so known host this is the name of file which contains the public key of the server right to copy your public key to the remote machine you need to write ssh copy id then so see it is asking you the password of the remote system so when you enter it is displaying number of keys added one right you can see at the remote machine cd.ssh authorized keys right if you just view this file this is the key of machine 1 so now let's try to log in ssh 192 168159.211 It shouldn't ask, ask us the password. See, you are able to enter to the remote machine without entering the password because your public key is stored in that machine. Right? So the connection is created and you can log out. Now, if at any time the server machine wants to avoid this login, now what he will then what the server machine needs to do, it will just remove this file which contains the public key of the client machine. Then the if once it is removed, the client machine will uh, will again need to enter the password before logging in, right? So there are a few more things also like the configuration file of SSH is for config. This is the configuration file of SSH service. So there are various things which are written like login grace time 2 minutes, permit root login yes. Maximum try is 6. So in order you want to change anything like you don't want to um, allow root login by using SSH services in your machine. You can write here. You can edit this file and you can write no instead of yes. Login grace time you can increase or decrease. Maximum tries you can increase or decrease. So there are these things are written. Right. Uh, it is written port number is 22 on which it is running right so this is a configuration file you can play with it and one thing which is important is that whenever you try to edit any configuration file of any server then it is very essential to uh, to take a backup of that file first because in case you edit it incorrectly then you can be able to restore the file right Let's view the file again just to see that whether we have completed everything in this chapter. So this is everything about SSH service. So thank you so much.